Well, Bennett Kessler filed this story. The sharp differences of opinion continue in Mammoth Lakes over Ormat Geothermal's plans to expand its operations. Mammoth Community Water District officials are not reassured by a recently released monitoring plan by Ormat. Now, in response to that plan, water, offici water officials issued a press release to say that Ormat Geothermal has just presented a, quote, grossly inadequate plan to monitor the impacts of its controversial geothermal expansion project. End quote. Now, the district says Ormat failed to respond to concerns, completed the plan in May, and only released it to the water district at the end of August. Ormat officials issued a response to say that the water district continues to criticize the project with many inaccurate statements and mischaracterized Ormat's efforts to date. Now, the Mammoth Community Water District press release says officials had reviewed Ormat's draft outline of its monitoring response. Re response plan and laid out a number of comments needed to protect the community's water supply. Officials said ORMAT finalized the plan in May without incorporating any of the quote comprehensive comments that the water district had provided end quote. Water district officials said they only found out about a completed plan in August one day before a meeting with ORMAT to discuss a mutually acceptable monitoring and mitigation plan. Mammoth Community Water District says the monitoring response plan includes no response for mitigation of any detected impacts to Mammoth's water supply. ORMAT Senior Vice President Bob Sullivan said that in said that his company has offered in writing quote multiple mitigation measures that include curtailing production from the Basalt Canyon area if an impact occurs to local groundwater, effectively shutting down our production wells, end quote. Sullivan continued to say that, quote, it is a mischaracterization for the water district to say that if there is a problem, there is no way to solve it, end quote. Now, Sullivan said the water district's press release makes it seem like ORMAT refuses to work on the plan at all. Said Sullivan, this is simply not true. Water District General Manager Patrick Hayes said, quote, unfortunately, what ORMAT presented to us is a poorly equipped fire alarm with no evacuation route. They may be able to tell us there is a problem, but they have no way to solve it, and that is simply unacceptable when dealing with our water supply, end quote. Hayes lists five minimum needs in the monitoring plan, including monitoring wells, stress testing, a monitoring and mitigation committee, and a mitigation plan and more. Hayes also calls for monitoring wells to go in now ahead of the project. Ormat's Bob Sullivan qu said, quote, we have been working in good faith with the water district on a monitoring and mitigation plan to protect the area's groundwater. Ormat has invested significant time and expense in developing a plan which includes ongoing monitoring for the life of the project, drilling new groundwater monitoring wells and performing stress tests. The bottom line is that Ormat also doesn't want anything to happen to the groundwater supply, both as a good citizen of the community and from a business standpoint, end quote. Well, inspired by the TED Ideas Worth Spreading Flash Talks, the Eastside Know How To series, these have been a series of talks into uh, serve as windows into the lives of creative, self-reliant Eastern Sierra locals who have an abundance of talent, determination, experience, and expertise. Now, the last in this series is set for Tuesday night, taking place once again at Jimmy's Taverna, 248 Old Mammoth Road. Doors open at six. Talks begin. Uh, excuse me. Doors open at five. Talks begin at six and see is first come first serve. Now the six minute talks on Tuesday include how to leverage digital 395 by John Wentworth, how to train for mountain warfare. This is by United States Marine Corps Captain Dane Sagerholm, how to survive Manzanar by Stephen Kobayashi, MD, how search and rescue goes call, goes from call out to search and rescue by Jeff Holmquist, how to get a forward medical team to the heart of the next disaster in 72 hours. That's going to be by David Page. How to Survive an Avalanche by Neil Satterfield. How to Write the East Side by David Carl. How to Live Where You Work When Home is an Art Gallery. That's by Robert Jokey. And How to Live Local and Engage Global. That's going to be by Katherine Allen. And How to Win a Free Ride Snowboard Ski Competition. That's going to be by Steve Claussen. More information, you can call the Sierra Nevada Resort and Spa 760-934 2515 extension 312.
And coming up this Saturday is the Mammoth Lakes Job Fair. Sarahway Media's Rob Gill filed this story. We are going to be hosting our fourth annual job fair on October 4th, 2014, here at the Westin Monashi Resort in Mammoth Lakes, California, hosted by the Mammoth Lakes Chamber of Commerce. We have 18 businesses so far that will be participating at our job fair, and uh, but we still have some more slots available if there are any businesses out there that are interested in, uh, in participating in this year's job fair. It's only $30 per business. We are going to have two uh, lovely ladies, both Nicola, who works here at the Westin, and Sarah Vigilani, who's the head of HR at the town of Mammoth Lakes. They're going to be reviewing um, prospective employees' resumes. And so before you enter the job fair and start circulating your resumes and talking to the various employers that will be set up there, you can uh, get some feedback on your resume and use the business center here at the Westin to make any adjustments or updates to that resume and, and print off a brand new resume and be ready to go. Uh, this will be the fourth year that Black Tie Ski Rentals uh, will be participating in the job fair. Um, we've had great success with finding very qualified, very quality employees, uh, some of which are, will be returning for the third or fourth year for us. This is Tyler May, uh, originally from Southern California. He was a job fair participant last year, and it worked out very well for him. Now he is a full-time employee in the marketing department for the Westin, and, uh, you know, it's just a great example of, of how beneficial this job fair can be for prospective employees and employers. So coming to the job fair last year, I actually wasn't quite sure what I was getting myself into. I finished up college in June with a major in marketing and came up here with a resume saying, I have a marketing degree and restaurant experience. I'll take what I can get as long as I can move to Mammoth. And I got fortunate enough to get a job at the Weston as Jeremy said, I stepped in as the sales and marketing coordinator here, and it's been, it's been quite a ride ever since. It's been an absolute blast. If you're looking for more information, you can visit our website, mammothlakesjobfair.org, or feel free to email me at president at mammothlakeschamber.org, and we can get you all the information you need um, about the job fair. Once again, it's Saturday, October 4th, from 12 noon to 4 p.m., at the Westin. It will be followed by a little mingling happy hour uh, at 4 p.m. in the White Bark, uh, also on site at the Westin. I mean, if you're thinking about coming to the job fair, go for it. it. I really debated the idea the whole time. It was the best decision I ever made, and all my friends are still a little jealous about it. All right, thanks for that, Rob. We'll be back with a weather report.